Heidi, hi everybody. Danish pastries, some great recipes on Cookie Do that you can follow. So it's going to take you through step by step if you need that extra support. Um, but if I tell you, you can make these amazing Danish pastries and you can be eating them within about half an hour. So just think about those guests that drop in Sunday breakfast, a real treat. They are so delicious and really easy. My name is Colette Matriga. Welcome to Colette Thermi Kitchen. I am a Thermomix consultant here in Australia with customers in all states and territories. So no matter where you are, if you'd love to get a TM6 in your kitchen, please consider selecting me as your consultant. I'd love to look after you and make sure you get the most out of this truly amazing, amazing kitchen appliance. All right, let's get started on these Danish pastries. So, I'm, I'm going to apologize, you're late. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry, I am late. I, I totally got missed the time and Andrew is watching YouTube videos. No, I'm waiting for you. Don't, oh, don't, really? don't <laughs> point the finger at me. Okay, a little domestic going on here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, it's really hot, as you all know. So at this time of year, um, I, I really wouldn't recommend, unless you've got a really cold house, making your own pastry. The pastry, as you know, if you're following me, that I absolutely love is the rough puff pastry on the Thermomix on Cookie Do. It is a fabulous pastry. I have done um, a live on making that before. And what I'll do is I will um, repost that for you. So in case you do want to have a go at making it, it's absolutely delicious. Um, you can actually do that. In fact, what I do is I tend to make it up on cooler days in the evening with the aircon on, and then I will have about six batches in my freezer ready to go. It freezes beautifully. What I would recommend for ease and this time of year if you're living in this hot Australian climate is to head off to a local supermarket and order the best quality all butter frozen puff pastry sheets that you can find. Um, you know you've got the ordinary puff pastry and then you've got the butter ones. We want the butter ones because Danish are really buttery. So grab those and then basically what you're going to do is you kind of semi defrost the sheets because you want to work with them when they're not soft because they're going to be stretchy and really hard to work with. And then to start off with just get those sheets and then just cut them into four and that's going to make it really easy. So from each um, sheet you're going to get four Danish pastries so you decide how many you want to make. If you're using the quick rub pastry like I have done today, um, you'll get about nine um, uh, Danish pastries out of one batch of puff pastry. Um, all right, so let's get going. So let's talk about the filling. Um, I'm gonna put these back in the fridge because I can feel them softening up already. It's 33 degrees here in, on the Gold Coast. Oh, so, so humid and hot. So as I said, you can follow step-by-step -step recipes, but they're really simple. Basically, you mm -hmm. need three things. You need the pastry, either shop-bought or the rough puff pastry that you make in the Thermomix. You need a filling. Now, there's three types of fillings that I love to use and swap between, and I'll talk to you about those in a minute. And you need something to put on top. It could be apricots like we're using today, it could be blueberries, flaked almonds, all sorts of different things. But let's head back to the filling. Now you so, need four things. What's that? And the Thermomix. Oh, of course, you always need the Thermomix. <laughs> um, let's just head back to those fillings. So the three fillings that I make, the very first one is just cream cheese. I love this one. And I have to confess, I, I tend to eat half the filling before it even goes near the Danish pastries. It's simply a case of taking some... Um, room temperature, in other words, soft cream cheese, mixing it with a little bit of icing sugar and a bit of vanilla essence, mixing that up. And it's quite a thick kind of texture you're after. And what you'll do is you'll dollop that into the middle, which I'm going to be showing you in a minute. So cream cheese is delicious, really super easy to do. Um, the, the next filling um, that I tend to use is custard. Now I have a great recipe for a super thick custard and I did this oh, probably about two years ago with everyone so I'll hunt out that recipe card and stick that on top. So if you want to make a really thick custard, this is a great These recipe. These are the best. I love those custard tarts. <laughs> Absolutely, especially with blueberries. Um, and the last one which I'm going to opt for today is a real quick almond filling which is quite kind of traditional. 
And what you need to remember, it's three ingredients. It's almonds, sugar, and butter. Same quantities of each. So I've got 50 grams here today. You could use more, you could use less, depending on what you want. So I've got unbleached um, almond, you know, with no skins on. Um, I prefer that, but you can use the skins. It's not gonna be a deal breaker. And I'm using raw sugar. So I'm gonna pop that into the Thermomix. And I'm gonna get that to mill these down. So I'm gonna press that home button and milling, we all know, basically I'm gonna go at 10 seconds. At speed, it's gonna be loud, speed nine or speed 10. So that would have milled that down. I love this function of the Thermomix. You know, you never have to buy things like icing sugar, um, rice flour, etc., because you can make it all yourself. So look how fine that is. 10 seconds, brilliant feature of the Thermomix. Now to that, I'm going to add my soft butter. Remember, equal quantities, sugar, almonds, butter. This is unsalted. Um, I'm just going to add that in there. Add this super soft. Me. And, and then I'm just going to combine those. I'm going to get a spatula sometime. Yeah, I to get a spatula out. So yesterday, Colette and I visited Costco for the first time. Yeah, that's an experience. What a crazy place. <laughs> you can buy a $30,000 pair of earrings, like diamond earrings, two carat earrings, or you can buy a $1.99, all the trimmings, hot dog, and drink that you can refill. Dollar ninety nine for a hot dogs and all the trimmings. Oh, it's an amazing I place. I wouldn't recommend it, um, but yeah, lots of good value to be had there, especially if you're cooking for a family. I was just actually absolutely amazed by the pricing, even petrol. Oh my gosh! I mean, where can you get a roast chicken for six dollars ninety nine? <laughs> and petrol is about forty cents a litre cheaper. It's just yeah, it what good. a what a good place. All right, so now in here I've got the ground down sugar and almonds. I've added in that soft butter and I just need to incorporate that and I'm going to go for six seconds at speed six. Okay, that should be fine. Yes, perfect. All right, so there we go. That's Kind of a bit like a, a marzipan -y kind of thing, but a lot nicer tasting. So I'm just going to scrape all that down and then I'm going to pop that out. And this is going to be that little paste that goes oh, in my it's so good. Andrew's being really good at the moment. He's back on his low carb diet. I have to. I know. This woman cooks everything so tasty, sweet, <laughs> and Yay, fattening. Thank you. <laughs> There's so many low carb things you can do with the uh, Thermomix. Yeah, um, not Danish. Can't have low carb Danish. No. It's like, it's like drinking wine with no alcohol in. I'm going to head to get my pastry. Yeah, anyone who has not been to Tech Costco, I really recommend it. It's like a, it's like a, a little country on its own. It's just, you know, you've got an optometrist in there. Just the most amazing selection of meats, fish, really. I've mm -hmm. never seen such a selection in any Coles or... or uh, all these supermarkets, you've really got to go to a specialist butcher or fishmonger. I mean, they had racks of ribs, oh, which, was, which was straight out of the Flintstones. It was like <laughs> half a cow of ribs. Now, they always had smaller portions. And um, I just think it was an amazing place. All right, so what I've got now, uh, this is my own pastry. I use my um, rolling pin, which you know I use all the time. That makes sure I've got pastry totally flat. Um, and I try to cut it for about 10 by 10, but... Um, if you're using fresh pastry, you'll find it does shrink back a bit, but 10 by 10 is a good size. And I usually cut a little template. I've got a couple of these size templates in a bag in my drawer, and I pull these out as and when I need them. So basically what we need to do, there's so many fancy shapes. I'm just going to show you two. Let's keep it simple. Um, so what we want to do is, now I'm not putting pressure on my mat with my knife. I'm literally just... Actually, I think I'll just do the cutting here. I'm going to go into the corners. Now, you don't want to go in too far. It's probably better on the cold work surface. Yeah, probably, actually, Andrew, you're right. But it's then getting it onto the mat. I like to do it on the mat. Right, so that's good. So the next thing we want to do is to put in a dollop of our filling, whatever that filling is. 
could be just jam, um, whatever whatever you like. So here we've got this beautiful um, almond oh, paste. I can't, I can't eat these either, can I? No. And then what we're going to do is each of the corners, we're going to do the top right one and we're going to bring that over to the middle and press it down. Top right hand corner into the middle, press down. So it's like a bit like a kite really, press down. A bit like, a bit like folk dancing into the and middle, go out to the back, into down. the middle. All right, so that's good. And then all I need to do on top of that um, is... It's like one of those things you put on the uh, stick and it whirls around in the wind. Oh, I've lost my... Little windmill. So Debbie, no, we didn't buy 60 eggs. <laughs> so 60 eggs are a bargain. Um, so once I've done that, I'm just going to get my egg wash and I'm just going to wash um, the pastry. And then what does that do? It gives it a shine and it also seals it in lovely. And it, it just gives it, it makes it look so much nicer. And then just with my lovely apricot, these are tinned apricots, of course you can use fresh. So that one now is ready to go. So I'm going to grab another. Tin negra. I love, anyone love t tin peaches as much as I do? Tin peaches, I could eat a whole tin. All right, now this one, just another another option. So again, um, in the middle, a nice bit of your almond um, paste. Very nice. <laughs> I could actually sit there with a bowl of that and eat that. Um, so I'm just going to pull the edges into the center. Um, you go opposite, pull that one into the center, and then pull up this one. So there's lots of other ways of actually decorating, but as I said, I just want to keep it simple. So that's fine, and then again, give it a wash. The other thing right. at Costco, they must have had about a dozen people that were sampling foods. You walk around, oh. you could have a full meal, and collect, <laughs> fell, in, fell in love with these, what were they, almonds? No, sorry, even cashews. Yeah. Cashew what? I can't remember. She keeps sending me back saying, go on, you go, you go and get another little <laughs> punnet of those. so good. Okay, so that one is down there now. And remember your bench scraper. This is your best friend apart from your sous chef, the Thermomix, in your kitchen. I love this. You know, when I want to do my 10 centimeter uh, parchment paper, that gives me an idea. I want to shift this guy, but I know how warm it is, so I'm just going to use this to help me. Okay. Now, um, I'm just going to, I've got one more piece here, so I'm just going to do this. I, I did the rest earlier on, so um, I'm just going to do the same style. So this really is quite a quick process for you to do. So in, in, again, just into the corners, um, egg wash. So that's just three. I should have actually done a different style for you there, but that's okay. Which one tastes better? <laughs> they all taste better. All right, and then in with that lovely, beautiful peach. So um, that basically is how you do your Danish. How simple is that? Now, what I really recommend, especially in this weather, is you pop these back in the fridge, which I'm going to do. I'll be back in one second. Put that that pastry is now warm if I was to touch that I would not be able to actually shape or do anything with it it needs to be nice and cold before you pop it into the oven 180 degrees fan for 15 to 20 minutes and then when they come out of the oven just let them cool down and what we have is we have some lovely danishes now when they come out of the oven what you need to do is to simply um, get some apricot jam, about a, about a tablespoon is fine, um, and add to that about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of boiling water. Mix that together. You can strain it off if you want, but I tend not to. Um, and then you're going to brush it all over. That's going to add flavour and continue with that glaze. And then often I will, if I've, if I've got nice guests... <laughs> <laughs> coming I will do a royal icing in the Thermomix it literally takes five minutes and then I will drizzle that royal icing on top and absolutely beautiful but just as nice today all we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit of icing sugar and just pop that on top and you can see just how beautiful that little bit of icing sugar on these doesn't that add so much to it isn't it, it? Does. look at that 
So there you go. So literally you can have these on your table within half an hour and they are going to be so incredibly delicious. I have a bite, haven't I? So these ones in the middle, I've got the cream cheese. I love this. Oh, you've done, you've done, these are all cream cheese you did, aren't mm. you? <laughs> you bugger, I can't have them. I'm sorry, Andrew. Mm. Can't wreck my low carb. That's so good. And, you know, how much is a Danish pastry? They're not cheap to buy, you buy them individually. These are crispy, buttery, and you've got your choice of internal fillings, and then you can put whatever fruit on top. Three components, your pastry, your filling, and your topping. You're totally fresh, and you know 100% of the ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Later on tonight, I will go through and put up um, my um, live that I did some time ago on making the, um, the, the rough puff pastry. And I'll also find that recipe for my really thick custard, which Andrew loves, and I'll repost that one for everyone. But please have a go. Why not? You know, um, and this weather, nothing wrong with going to the shops and buying that beautiful butter puff pastry, cutting it into four, and off you go. So that's me for tonight. Thank you so much. Remember, we have as, as our gift at the moment with our Thermomix, if you're buying it, a um, those vacuum seal containers and the wand. You know how much I love those. They are, they're a must in my kitchen. I love them so much. Um, and that has been extended um, for a little bit longer. So if you're thinking of getting a Thermomix, that's a good reason. It's great to have a good bonus gift that you know you're going to use and is good quality. So that's me for now. Reach out if I can help in any way. Um, I look forward to seeing those of you that have booked into my modes class on Zoom tomorrow night, where we actually run through all the different modes of the Thermomix. There you go. My name's Colette Vitrina. I'm going to have one or two of these Danishes for my dinner. Why not? Andrew's on a low-carb diet tonight. Um, and I will see you on Thursday. Pizza, pizza day. Well, kind of the day before pizza day. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks about making great pizza bases. We had pizza on Sunday. Oh, well, I know. So good. And they we? were brilliant. So good. We just love them. I know. We do love them. All right, everybody. Have a beautiful evening. My name is Colette Retriga. Take care. Say goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. I'm sorry you can't have any. <laughs> Goodness. I, I will drizzle them in chocolate. <laughs> no, no, no. Royal icing. Remember, I usually often do that. Oh, so good. <laughs>